Welcome to the My Crazy Office podcast with the authors of Working With You Is Killing Me, Working For You, Isn't Working For Me, and Mean Girls At Work, Kathy Elster and Catherine Crowley. They're committed to creating world peace, one crazy office at a time. And now, here are Kathy and Catherine. Hey everyone, I'm Kathy Elster. And I'm Katherine Crowley, and welcome to My Crazy Office. And today we want to welcome our guest, Alicia. Hi. Hey guys, how you doing? Now, Al- Alicia is a stand-up uh, comic who we saw at the Gotham Comedy Club, and we know you're friends with another com- comedian who was here, uh, Mike Fine, who we couldn't stop laughing. Yeah, um, Mike's great. I just laugh thinking about him. I know, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> he brings a smile to your face, I yeah. know. Uh, so what's the best way for people to find you? Hey, you guys can check me out on Facebook. Uh, you can see my username is Alicia Funny Guy. Getting past those restrictions that Facebook has over there with the Funny Guy last name. Like, are you sure that's your real last name? <laughs> Just makes it easier to find. But yeah, you can check me out over there, and we'll become s- acquaintances and friends. How do you spell your name? Sure, E L I S H A. That's S is in Sam. That said, Alicia. Yeah, okay. There you go. All right, so <laughs> let's go to our first question, Logan. Sure. I've just discovered that my salary is significantly lower than a guy who has the same position as I do and who came in two years after I did. It's particularly irritating because my boss, who is a woman, assured me that the company is trying very hard to treat men and women equally. What do I do about this? So this is a woman who's being underpaid. Well, she's being paid. We don't know if she's being underpaid, but she's being paid less Less than than her her new male co-worker. Yeah, I think, you know, sort of salaries, that gets around. Well, and it could have come out with this guy, maybe in a casual conversation, you know, about bonuses or something. I don't know. Although maybe he was lying. He just made chair. that whole thing up, and he's getting paid like half of what she's That's getting possible. Paid. That's true. Oh, trying I never play, thought of that. Trying to play mind games with her? Yeah. But I think this is a real scenario. I think yeah. that, you know, two years later, the market, depending on what you do, the market could bear a much higher salary. Yeah. I mean, the thing I think she needs to do, she needs to go on one of those, you know, uh, salary.com websites and mm-hmm. find out what her position is, what's the going rate. See, once you're brought in at a certain level, you never really get, you know, you can only go so much up. Mm-hmm. So she may have to leave to get the salary she wants, or she might be able to renegotiate with her company. Right. Well, and I, just to make it a little more complicated, uh, what I saw in this is that the company is trying very hard to treat men and women equally. So the company itself, it sounds to me, is on a learning curve. And it could well be that they're still operating from the bias that most men are seen as the providers for their family yeah. versus this woman, if she's a single professional woman, doesn't see, isn't seen as needing as much. Yeah, women are paid less, right? Yes. That's what they yeah. say in recent studies. I think what she would have to do is to treat it like, like a man. She would have to go and use the other type of psychology where she would have to ask that he gets uh, not a raise, but he should get a lower salary, and that would balance it out if that's what the, that's what the <laughs> boss wants. With that. <laughs> but it, just she for equality say, purposes. She says she could come in and say, I have a solution that will also help the company. Exactly. That's the <laughs> solution provider. That, that's what she can be for the company, saving them money. <laughs> Yeah, I think she's got some work cut out for her. But, you know, everyone has the, really, the responsibility to know what their current salary should be, what the market is bearing. Yeah. But I've seen this with clients where they've got an employee, you know, they hired them at one time, and then they go, they go to get other people like them, and the market is just higher. Right. It's just... It requires a higher you know, uh, if, if uh, that, offering. Right. If, that, if she were to leave, she could really leap up big. But, you know, companies can only, they feel they can only give you a certain incremental raise. So mm-hmm. if you start low, you're going to be low. Does she so. bring this to her boss? I think she, well, the thing is, how does she know how about this other person's salary? That's a problem We'd right there. We'd have to find out mm-hmm. more about that. Yeah, maybe she's checking their emails or something. Who knows what she's doing? <laughs> <laughs> there could be well, cameras, and that's why she's not getting hands. I don't think it's illegal to tell somebody, you know, it was just hired at this rate. I think that kind of information just gets around. Uh-huh. But, but I think she does have to go to her boss and say, you know, he's being paid a lot more than me. That information has come to my attention. Pension. What can we do about this? Yeah. And find out what can be done. 
And yeah. then if the boss doesn't help, she can throw a big tantrum or something that might help. <laughs> yeah. you know, to get that the always attention. helps. That will improve her that, professional standing. That's what I've heard. Yeah. And right. the, I think that was on salary. As emotional also. or anything. <laughs> yeah, exactly. She'll get known as a diva, and uh, <laughs> that, that'll help her career. Right. What I was what I was going to say actually is just a piece of psychological advice that we give often is I think the key in this is not to make assumptions and also to keep your cool. You know, that you do want it, that it's worth having a conversation with the boss and certainly doing the research, but don't act out. No offense, Alicia, to your great idea, but, you know, don't act out because you don't have, you may not have all the information. I mean, money's always a trigger, right? Because it, it speaks to value and everybody feels like we're undervalued. Yeah. You know, so it's a real trigger point, I think, for a lot of people. Yeah, but what if she goes on that website and it turns out she's being overpaid from what salary.com well, suggests? Yeah, then, <laughs> maybe, then, she's just shut yeah then, then shut up. Right? <laughs> <laughs> but then what about this guy making more than her? That's not fair either. So just get him fired. That's then she'll really. Well, that feel you good. could set him up for sabotage. You could do that. Didn't that too. just happen with the Clippers guy? <laughs> just I think he him. was set up. What do you Probably think? was set up. I think he was. What's happening with the Clippers? Oh, I don't. I'm sorry. All right. I'm oh, you got to get current. Gotta get current. <laughs> and that's a whole. Save your racism that's for when you're way. not being recorded. Oh, that's yeah. the lesson. So that's they, the lesson from. The and clip. there's a detail there that's a little confusing to me. So he was talking to his girlfriend, and mm. uh, somehow he was that, half black. Right. That conversation was recorded. It was a personal conversation. But I don't understand the the wife is suing the girlfriend. There's a detail there about the Very girlfriend. Confusing. I mean, it's all. So what's the guy's ethnicity? He's. No, he White. was portrayed as a racist mm-hmm. through his comments. He didn't want his... Uh, Might just be a senior citizen. Those go hand in hand sometimes. <laughs> well, but he apparently is... It's on the record that he's been a racist for a very long time. But So everybody's focused on the racism thing. I'm actually focused on that he has a girlfriend. Right. And he's married. <laughs> and then they're suing one another. That's the amazing. NBA should have fined him just for that. I that would have been, that been a state. They have a lot of fines on their hands if that, that was the technique. So anyway, <laughs> that's a whole mess. He's, you know, I heard today that Oprah is going to buy the Clippers now. Anyway. All right, let's just go on to another. Whoa, Oprah. We are, I hope that was very useful for this lady. Now. <laughs> now, that's a woman who knew how to get money. Exactly. Right. I'll tell you one thing she didn't do. She didn't care about who had bigger salaries. That's she, a good she point. She just went and started her own business. So maybe yeah. that's... Well, there's just, always just an option. Oprah Start did. your own thing. Yeah, don't like, don't like 8 to 10% of them succeed, so... Right there, that's a... Uh, hey, well, this is, uh, it's, it's a very high statistic to how many women start their own business. Yeah. Because they want the flexibility. So I, that's true. All right, what's our next question? I work with someone who has a superiority complex, and it's really getting to me. We are at the same professional level in the company, but she clearly thinks that her work is more important than mine. She recently told me to hurry up and do your job so I can do mine. How do I deal with her? Ugh, I can't stand this kind of person. <laughs> superiority con- You're better. I would have gone even slower on purpose. You would have? <laughs> It's like driving on the highway yeah, when the person's second, flashing just, the brights. Yeah, and you yeah, kind of yeah. just go into park. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think that's that's the best way. But uh, can you teach someone once they get to a certain age, though? They're, they might just be like this. Well, actually, the, I think the most important thing is the first thing you have to do is know that this is, you are so not the first person to whom she has said this kind of thing. And it's her problem. She obviously is a brash uh, communicator. And so I think for the person on the receiving end, the first thing you have to do is to, uh, we would say, unhook. You know, don't take her personally. The second thing is that very often brash people have no idea how the delivery of their words really affects you. Yeah. So you could easily say to someone like this, look, I know it's not your intention, but that was an insult, what you just said. And they'd probably be surprised. I don't, you could say that, but so they'll be surprised and then what? They're going to back down? I don't think so. See, this kind of person scares me. They, you know, very few people scare me, but this kind of person scares me, and I usually go, oh, okay, and I do what they want because I'm petrified of them. They're bullies. Ah. I, I would add a third thing to this. You should just always give them work for the weekend. I would <laughs> just give them everything. Four fifty nine Friday. That'll give them. Tell her she can go. hurry up as long as she. Show them how me. important they really are. <laughs> they just really want to get the job done. They can do it at nights and weekends. Always. Ooh. Everything should be given to them end of day. Yeah. Well, That's what I... But there are two kinds of bullies. They're the ones who know they are and use it, and there are those who really are unaware. And we've come across the unaware bully, Kathy. Have we not? Of course. 
<laughs> oh, She's like, and I'm petrified of them. I, they scare me. There's something, there's some internal rage in them. It's just there's like, something yeah. about them that I find scary. Yeah. And, and to me, I prefer the bully that knows they're a bully because they know they're a bully. Yeah. It's the unconscious ones that scare me. The, they're the most dangerous one. I mean, Vladimir Putin is one of the most Ugh. famous. He doesn't even know. If we would just tell him. He, <laughs> I think he's quite aware of his bullying tactics. Um, I think if he knew, then Ukraine would just. You give them back in an instant. But yeah. I don't know, no, I think there are people like this who are very results oriented. Yes, they may have slight anger problems. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I also think they can be deflected. And then sometimes humor, Alicia, you can give us examples, can work with this kind of person. Like you can say, oh, you say the sweetest things. Yeah. You know, <laughs> uh, let me just run that by for you quickly. You know, you can sort of deflect and have them not take themselves so seriously. Yeah, I mean, you should never tell. I'm working as fast as I can. This makes you seem <laughs> weak. Then <laughs> they pounce on that. You don't want to do that. <laughs> I'm working as fast while you're crying. <laughs> what if you just say, um, you know, yes, master, like you make fun Right. Of, okay, so you I'm like sure that. They, they would love that. Yeah. I'm sure if you start telling them, <laughs> yeah. being just as vicious back, yes, your highness. Yes, <laughs> you exactly. You bow politely. Right. I guess. So I that them rolled up memos like in a scroll. <laughs> <laughs> right, so that, that's a really good idea. <laughs> be so hilarious. They would see the ridiculousness. Well, seems. they may or they may not, but yes, in a way it will stop them because what, someone like this gets on a roll where they're just like, it's got to happen, you know, like a dog after a bone. And if you can stop them just a minute or disarm them for just a minute, they can at least get over themselves for just a minute. They can they, laugh at themselves. Yeah, exactly. Okay, well, humor is the answer. Humor is yeah. the answer, so but it takes jokes bully. about the whole thing. Would that work yeah. it with Putin? <laughs> <laughs> it <could> <laughs> Doesn't seem like a guy you want to joke around I'm, with. Pro- probably not. Uh, <laughs> he knows like taekwondo or some kung yeah, fu. He just yeah. throw you over the shoulder. Different kind of bully than just a superiority complex. Yeah. So <laughs> the whole idea is first you have to assess the person out to see if they have any sense of humor whatsoever, right, and right. then if they do, you work with it. Then you guys will have just a fun office where jokes are flying around and then no work will get done. <laughs> the next email will be from the boss. Stop uh, kidding around. Productivity Two employees is just joking around all day. I, I think humor really does work, though, at work. I, I do. I think it works. Humor works at work. That sounds like yeah. a good book title. Oh, my God. Ooh. That's the next book. Oh, Humor Beautiful. at work. All right, well, that's it for this show. So, um, Alicia, how can people find you again? Give us that Facebook page. Yeah, sure. You could, uh, let's be friends on Facebook, then you guys could do that. And then I'll get my <laughs> website up and going over the summer. So, Yay. Alicia Funny Guy. That's Alicia, E L I S H A. And yeah, Alicia thanks so funny much. Funny Guy. Okay, thanks excellent. So I'll be friending you later. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. That's very good for the self-esteem. Yeah. I, I know. You should base your self-esteem off your Facebook friends. I know. <laughs> oh, that, now you were in trouble. <laughs> All right. So join us next time for another My Crazy Office podcast. And don't forget to send your questions and stories to info at mycrazyoffice.co. My Crazy Office is produced in New York City at Key Squared Studios. Stay crazy. <laughs>